So yes, that's how I feel. It is so, so uh, exciting for those who can't wait to see how it plays out, especially those who have uh, the strong belief in the process as it goes. Uh, let's let you know that it's 85 days, 22 hours, about 38 minutes and some seconds into the presidential elections in 2023. And of course, it gets even more uh, into the uh, you know state uh, governorship elections and state houses of assembly elections in 2023. So yeah. uh, the elections are closer than we think. Before you know it, within a day or two, we'll be warming up to go cast our ballots across the country. Angela, now let's talk about the voter mm -hmm. in the country. Uh, what have you seen or what are you even seeing presently with an average Nigerian electorate? Have we been able as individuals and voters, electorates, identify who we are and what we're worth in the totality of what the country can be if we all stand up to do what we should do? Okay, thank you so much for this question. So we've been, we've been seeing um, a different um, side uh, to different sets of people. So there's the part of individuals that go, do you know what, 2023 is one major election that's going to happen and we need to play a role in it. And this same set of people are saying, we're not exactly sure what we're going to do would make a difference. There's the um, hope dwindling on one end. And then there's the part of, um, are our votes really, do they really count? Um, questions like, um, why should I even be involved in that process of, you know, of voting, considering the fact that my security and my safety, I'm not even sure of that. I don't want to risk my life. Um, so we, we have different sets of people that are also saying, do you know what? We're going to Jaffa out of the country and just wait to see how the election is going to go. And then if it goes however we want it to go, then we can come back again to the country. So that's, you know, that side. Then we also have another side of people that are like, this is an opportunity for us to do something. We're going to seize this opportunity. We're going to play our role. We're going to be a part of the solution. And this is where, of course, Vote 023, we come in. Also pushing that messaging out and trying to get more people to shift from the first end that I mentioned to this present end, which is we have the chance to do something about the coming election. We have a role to play. Irrespective of the situation that we see, we know that our structures and our systems are not exactly as perfect as we hope it to be, but we are not going to give that as a reason why we will not play our role in the coming election. So yes, you, you have different sets of people. And this is the reason why we have to keep having this conversation. And I'm really glad that we're talking about this today, you know, to, to see what we can do and the role that we can play in putting this conversation on the front burner regarding voter apathy. Because at the end of the day, um, if this is not addressed, it would just seem like, for years and years, we've been complaining and driving the pressure. And then if we get to that point where we're supposed to, should I say, give birth, and then we fail. And we don't do anything about it because that power still remains in the voters' hands to make that decision. So that's um, exactly what we've been seeing lately. Uh, you know, Angela, for many Nigerians who are not accustomed to what that constitution says, uh, we know that the 1999 constitution is amended even today. Uh, the chapter 4 tells us about the rights that we have uh, as a people, as individuals, uh, in different, uh, on different occasions. Oh, I can barely hear and you. election times, not an exemption. How much of understanding have we come to as a people uh, with dealing with political parties? Because there is no politics without political parties all the electorates, all the umpire, and perhaps the uh, people at the top who would help us ensure that the loss of the lands are adhered to at every point in time. Uh, what's your view of the political parties' activities in the build-up to the elections, uh, especially as contained under the law? I, I lost communication there, but if you're asking about my views concerning the political um, 
uh, parties and what they're doing recently. I think all the parties are just <laughs> doing what they, what they can right now to get as many people as uh, possible to buy into their candidates. Yes, I feel like they are also trying to do um, in their campaigns, trying to uh, as well get um, as many people to equally, should I say, get their PVCs uh, to vote because I hope they know as well that without their PVCs, you know, um, they can't uh, do much regarding getting more people to vote for their candidates. So I think every political party is doing what they can. Um, it, would, it would have been great to see how um, um, we have um, them put a bit of more pressure as well on, on INEC uh, uh, to help release <laughs> some of the PVCs that are, that are not, you know, out at the moment. Uh, we, we have quite a number of us that have registered and are still not able to have access to um, our PVCs um, from INEC, uh, members of our, of our team is, is the same thing as well. And it's bringing about different questions. Um, is INEC compromised? It's bringing about questions like our, our, our um, PVCs safe um, in there? Why do we not have access to it? You know, at this point in time, we're almost, we're already in December. Today's the first day of December and elections happening sometime February uh, or yeah, February or March. Okay, missed that, yeah. So, yeah, February. Uh, so now the issue is, why do we not have our cards, you know, right now? So the question is, are political parties also doing the same thing? In, in as much as they are pushing out their candidates and, you know, talking about, you know, getting more people to come on board to their parties, are they also putting that pressure on INEC to say, you know, you need to release these cards? And then, of course, there's the... Um, there is, you know, we've been hearing different kinds of news going out, you know, lately as to different, you know, I don't know who they are. I just don't want to say things out, you know, going out to see how to, you know, uh, collect um, people's PVCs. And I, I, let me not uh, mention that right now. But the issue is, are political parties playing their role as well? And also making sure that they are not going to be the cause of uh, violence uh, during the elections because that is what is a major major fear for young people and people in general that that are like see i, I really don't want to risk my life for nigeria right now okay. because nigeria has not in quotes done done a lot mm. for me, so i'm not going to do that so the question is and 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 that might be a valid excuse or valid reason and we in vote 023 we tend we don't downplay on the valid reasons why people don't want to go out to vote but we say that for every reason you um, give as to not wanting to go out to vote we can give you 23 other reasons why you should go out you know to that's vote. the point so our political parties playing their role in making sure that violence is not a reason why people would not come out to vote on that uh, angela and that's the point uh, the the I neg the electoral umpire did come out to say that the young people came out on mass to, to register to vote for 20, in 2023 general elections, and so many people are very optimistic that for the first time in a very long time that they would come out to really uh, you know exercise their franchise as uh, <laughs> citizens of this country and see how they can change the narratives of how things uh, are going to suit what they want from 2023, mm -hmm. but. You know, Angela, let's bring this down. Let's bring it out to the way we would talk, <laughs> where we really have to say the truth to one another. Many people are still of the yeah. opinion that the young people have a way of starting a process, but concluding such has always been a challenge, especially in this part of the world. What are your expectations with your young voters in 2023? What are you hearing? What are you seeing? Okay, so... My expectation is, and, and for me personally, I mean, one of the reasons we, we have on our platform on Vote 023 is, I think our second reason is seizing the opportunity. So I talk a lot um, to young people and saying, this is the opportunity you've all been waiting for. We've been talking about this for years, years, years and years. This is the time to do something about it. And you have to finish what you started because there's, the, um, there's that narrative about young people, which is, oh, yeah, just like what you mentioned, you started something and then you don't have the lever <laughs> to conclude it. And it's like, no, we have 
the tenacity, we have the lever, we have the power, we have the force, we have everything within our hands to do something about the next you know, coming election. Which is the reason why um, all our, um, should I say, all our um, uh, conversation on social media needs to be driven towards ensuring that we put a lot of pressure on INEC to release our cards. Because without these cards coming out, our PVCs, everything we've spoken about is just going to be in vain. There's only going to be one day on that election day when we're going to be voting in the next president, the next, you know, uh, um, other elections that are ha happening, and we cannot do anything about it without having our PVCs. So we need to seize the opportunity. And right now, the role that we play within that space, the electoral process right now, is picking our PVCs and voting. And this needs to be done as urgently as possible. So I want to drive all forms of pressure right now to INEC to say, INEC, you need to release our cards. We can no longer register. There are some people that can't register anymore, right? But those that have registered, and there's a lot of young people that registered. Why do we not have our cards? Because that's our power and that's our right. So um, that's the conversation that we're having a lot right now in Vote 023, which is to get more people to collect their PVCs so that they yeah. can vote. And we've been able to do this, you know, by you know, um, um, coming up with creative um, messages, right, in different languages, in Hausa, Yoruba, Igbo, Pidgin, and in English as well. And one of the things we're doing is seeing how to get um, people to send these messages to uh, their friends, their colleagues in different areas in Nigeria, so that on their phones, they hear the vote 023 message. This is the time for you to seize that opportunity. You can no longer sit on the fence. You have to do something about this so-called um, frustration that you've had and you talked about over the past few years. This is the moment and you need to seize it. Thank you for that submission. I'd let you let it all out because at this station we can assure you the majority of young people in the country, this is their station. And so this topic is very, very apt for them this morning to hear us speak out to them. Uh, we're not just targeting young people, we're targeting the entire Nigerian populace, but we're just picking in one after the other. You said something just a while ago that uh, we have to put pressure on INEX to ensure that uh, the, the prospective electorates get their PVCs to vote in 2023. Uh, would I suggest that you have some reservations with regards to how the electoral umpire works? Okay, Angela, no, I mean, I me. think right now it's just, it's, it's, I, I understand that our system is not perfect. I, I completely understand that. And I'm one of those people who would keep saying that we cannot, um, allow the excuses of the fact that our system is not perfect for us not to do anything about it. So I always go from the, from the part of um, what is my role in the solution, right? Or what is my role? Or am I playing a role add, um, adding to the problem? And what can I do within the powers that I have to play a role within the solution, right? So all I'm saying right now is INEC is the body that is supposed to handle our PVCs. We, as young people, went out as a group, right? Everywhere, there was this national call, go out, go out, register, 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 register. We've done that. Now it's time to collect, collect, collect. And we don't have it. INEC, you have to give us some answers. I feel like nonprofit organizations who are also involved in that space as well should be putting that pressure on INEC. Because if we don't have this, there's really nothing. We're just going to end up sounding like a group of people who just keep talking and talking on the social media space, but nothing is done about it, 
right? And that is just where I'm, that this is just where I'm, I am at right now. I don't want to say much, but we need but to. But you know what? I asked the question, Angela. To um, our, I just, I, we're trying as an organization to sound out Nigerian country. people on the level of trust, of belief, or expectation of INEC in delivering our free, fair, credible, and acceptable elections in 2023. And it would be very nice to have people like you and others that we go on the streets. Every day we're on the streets talking to people, caring what they're feeling. And uh, I don't know in all of these, aside the PVC issue, which you, you've kept hammering on, do you have the, the, the trust, let me, let me use that, that INEC would deliver, as promised, um, credible elections in 2023 with all that you see around you? <sighs> I'm going to be honest with you that there is also that fear, um, which is also a reason why people are saying, do our votes really count? I'm not going to downplay on that. And that's what also makes this 2023 election very interesting. And that, that, that's what, you know, when I talked about earlier on the, the pressure that I felt towards 2023, that's also part of that pressure. It's like, we're about to get to the stage of some birthing process. Are we sure that in all of this pressure, in all of this conversations, in all of this work, in all of the, shall I also say drama, <laughs> you know, are we sure that at the end of the day, there's going to be um, a delivery of, you know, this right candidate, whoever this right candidate is, that fear is very much valid. This is the reason why in Vote 023, I mean, we are nonpartisan. We don't talk to anybody about which candidates to vote for. No, we don't do that. What we do in Vote 023 is to look at the 23 reasons why we think um, everyone should pick up their PVCs to vote. We also say as well, I mentioned as well, that for whatever reason you feel you don't want to go out to vote, which includes, do our votes count? We can give you other reasons to um, help you um, make that decision that your vote actually does count. If your votes don't count, people will not try to buy your votes. So they do count. It is just that um, hope that um, Nigerians need to have, and we in Vote 023 are pushing that hope to say, don't lose hope, don't lose faith. Our systems, yes, they are not perfect. They are not as structured as we hope it to be. But in every other organization, or sorry, every other country that has a better um, electoral process that we hope for, it, for Nigeria to be like, they didn't get there in one day. They got there over a period of time, they had their own irregularities, they had their own challenges, but they stood by it, they stood by the process. They, 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 they worked on it, they refused to take no for an answer and they did something about it and that is why they are where they are right now. So in Voto 33 we say, let's stop complaining about the things we don't like about our country and let's see what we can do let's see the role that we can play and that's why we gave 23 reasons why we think you know every nigerian should pick up their pvcs you know to vote and one of it is uh, you, you know one very interesting thing about electionary is process is if it um, is with for those who are like not registered to know that they have the right have, to register um, as electorate in the country hello? and then you collect okay. your pvcs and then you want to depend on INEC for the laws you have to follow so that you don't fall on the other side of the law while trying to cast your ballot as a uh, you know, bona fide member of this society and community called Nigeria. Um, however, uh, electionary patterns in the past uh, were characterized by, for instance, vote buying, violence, and a lot of other things. If I hardly ever issue based, you find you found those times political parties and uh, stakeholders going at each other's throat, you know, casting personal expressions against one another. And um, how do you think the laws, especially Electoral Act 2022, uh, would be able to shape in uh, this next election? And from what you okay, hear I think from I'm people, you. I'm not, are they aware I'm that there are you. laws that can help them get better elections, uh, you know, next time, that's next year? 
Uh, or do you think there's still, uh, you know, some reasons for the voters, especially those who didn't care, undecided voters? Some will just get to the polling station and the polling booth, I beg your pardon, and say, this person looks good, I'm casting my ballot, because they have no idea who the person is or the manifesto of the person or the party of the person. So, um, have all of these issues been, been ironed out towards the general elections next year from what you can see, Angela? Okay, so I, I, I also I lost um, I didn't really hear the <laughs> earlier part of your of your um, conversation, um, um, but I did hear the part where you talked about um, n um, maybe individuals going to cast their votes for um, a political party or candidates without necessarily knowing anything about their manifesto or what they want to do, right? I heard that part, and your question t to me is what I think about it, right? All right, uh, I think a network is hanging. Angela is joining us from Abuja. Okay, it's back. All right, please go on. I missed you for just a oh, bit. Yes, yeah, so please go on. Yes, yeah, so uh, were you asking about what I think about people who just cast their votes for candidates without knowing exactly their uh, manifestos? Trying to say, how have the electorates been able to understand? of these processes leading to the general elections, especially uh, the changes, or let me say some modifications of the Electoral Act that will help them to know that, for instance, their votes count and uh, there are things that are expected of them and not of some people so that they can have the, uh, you know, the zeal to go and vote. You know, before now we experienced voter apathy where you find uh, a lot of people, you found, for instance, I beg your pardon, uh, a number of uh, voters that are eligible to vote in a particular place, but will not go out on election day. Why? Because they felt then that the, their votes won't count. From what you're hearing from uh, the people that you work with or people around you, have people been able to uh, really understood how the electoral process would work in 2023 such that going out to vote won't be a waste of time for them? That's basically the question. Right. Thank you so much. Um, definitely, there's a lot of, um, should I say, misinformation regarding how the electoral process works. Um, there's also more of the education. I also believe um, people should, should have as to um, how the electoral process um, also works. Now, who is responsible for that um, um, education who is responsible for that information of course the media has their role to play in making sure that you know people uh, when i say media tv i'm talking about radio as well um, um are we having more conversations on tv and on radio to inform and to educate the public as to how the electoral process works um is INEC also playing their role as well and pushing this out um also using the media and getting people to see that this is you know this is how um uh, the electoral process works um on our own end um are we also um doing um doing that um i guess maybe our focus mainly has not really been on that area has been mainly on the uh voter apathy you know side but that still also doesn't uh stop us from pushing this out um because even in our conversations we also raise this up as well that the, the part that you play has to do with when you of course you know um make that vote now i i, I must say this though that um we do have quite a number of people that believe um, that um, what's the point as well in voting right now because they, they were not involved in choosing the candidates that candidates, are being yeah. given to us. Yes. And, and so they feel, I don't like any of the three or five or ten, <laughs> you know. I don't like any of them. I don't believe in any of their uh, manifestos. Why, you know, should I as well vote um, for these individuals? And then they step away um, from that process. Uh, they step away from engaging that process. Um, and then what we normally say is, okay, um, at the end of the day, we're still going to have one of these individuals become the president of the nation in the next four years.
right? So whether you don't like any of them, the truth is they're still going to play a role in your life and you're still going to keep complaining. Now, to prevent yourself from complaining and to also know that you played your own part in making some form of change, you need to engage the process and you still need to pick any of the reasons that we have on our platforms as the reason to vote in the coming election. So let's say you're not interested in any of the parties, but you come on our platform and you see healthcare. Why don't you look at Nigeria and say, I want to see a difference in the healthcare of Nigeria, mm. the healthcare system. I want to see a difference in the security process of our nation. I want to see a difference in our education, in our, in our educational sector. And because of these reasons, I'm going to pick my PVCs to vote. I'm not doing this because of any of these individuals, but I'm doing this because of my country, Nigeria. And that is what, that's the messaging that we give to people yeah. who fall within that category that you mentioned. Angela, you know, in other climates, you can easily relate to what political parties stand for in, in terms of their ideologies, so to speak. Have you been able, as first and foremost an electorate, understood uh, the uh, <laughs> ideologies of the political parties, my colleague here, uh, that are up for voting uh, for in 2023? Because just as you said, many people are like, I really don't really understand. And some don't even understand the manifestos of the political parties. So uh, based on the fact that you want people to go out, we also want everyone to go out, I'm going to vote. But then would it be advisable for people who don't understand what is going on or what they're voting for to still because they want to exercise a franchise, go cast their ballots? Well, okay, so I think, again, that it is extremely important for... I think it's extremely important for this set of individuals that we've just talked about right now to still engage the process and understand more about each of these candidates and what they have to bring to the party, uh, to, to the table, and what the party as well um, um, has um, to bring to the table um, in the coming in election. Now, I will say again that we do have sets of individuals that believe that even the things that are put out in the manifesto is just grammar, is just English. At, that at the end of the day, no one is going to follow that process. I'm saying this because these are the reasons that, that we find. These are the reasons that young people talk about, you know, and, and, and this, is, this is what is causing even the voter apathy, you know, level to, to increase as well. And I'm not going to downplay on that. However, I feel that when you want to make a decision between, you know how you say you have to make a decision between the, the devil and the um, deep blue sea or so, or uh, someone has to make a decision between... Um, the good, the, <laughs> good, the to, bad, the ugly, or the words. good, the worst, however you want to put it together, right? At the end of the day, that decision needs mm. to be done. And for you to make that decision, you would need to understand about these individuals, these um, political parties, and pick the list, <laughs> should I say, pick the, the, the list that, the, the, the better of, uh, of what you have. Because right. if you do not do so, you are still going to be stuck for the okay. next four years with Angela. whoever others bring on board. We, we have to so, go now. Um, we have to go now. But let's fast forward, if you can hear me. We have to go now. Let's fast forward to election days in 2023. What are the roles of the citizens in ensuring that elections are free, fair, credible, and would work their own way? In 30 seconds. Oh, okay. Um, it's your responsibility to pick up your PVCs and vote in the coming 2023 election. Please call our awareness line, and that's on 01-700-6212. If you call that number, you are going to have um, the opportunity to listen to messages that would get you 
to find reasons to vote in the coming uh, election. You can go on our platform as well on uh, vote023.org okay, and get Angela. all of the 23 reasons. All right, Angela. Uh, we can call you and you get all of the information okay. and in different languages as well. Thank you so much. I've been speaking with Angela Ochubai, lead collaborator, Thank Vote you. 023. I'll be speaking on citizens' participation in electoral process and the build-up to the 2023 general elections. Angela, thank you so much for being part of News Hub today. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. And so that's the show. We want to thank you for being part of it all day, all, all morning long, so to speak. We want to thank you so much to all our resource persons. And let's let you know that your fate is in your hands at this point in time. Uh, INEC has promised that it will deliver on free, fair, credible elections and transparent as well. Come 2023, get your PVC, vote your conscience. And if you've not loved what had happened in the past in the electoral processes in the country, you have another chance. Not only he blames on authorities, but also for you to do the right thing moving forward. And that's the show today. On behalf of the team, we wish you a very beautiful day and invite you also to join us tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. I'm Sheo Oyediji. Have a pleasant day.